afternoon. I've been asked to close out in this wonderful bright sunshine. And so I'm excited and happy. Thank you from, to uh, Margo Slanger for my introduction. I appreciate you and all the work that you've done in equity. I'm also thankful to all of those who put this together. Rudy, can you hear me? Thank you for putting all of this together. And to your fearless leader, let's give her a round of applause for all that she's doing to do this today. I know that the hour is far spent, as they say, because I come out of the black church as well, because I am a pastor. So my remarks are not just going to be because Secretary Bell said, has indicated, be your authentic self. Right. because we don't do it any other way. Right. And so I want to thank you, the National Women in Agriculture Association, together with my colleagues, for the opportunity to come here today to speak. It's an honor to join you in your march for equity and inclusion to save our youth. Yes. We know that women play a critical and crucial role in the world's agriculture industry. We do it all. We hold up the sky, we feed our families, we make a way out of no way, we always have. Women make up nearly half of the entire workforce. And as the daughter of a farmer, my grandfather used to say, whoever feeds you controls you. And he did that when I was in high school once, and he had watermelons on the back of his truck, and he came to pick me up. And as any teenager, everybody else was being picked up in fine cars. But my grandfather was picking me up in a pickup truck full of watermelons. And he could see on my face that maybe I was a little bit embarrassed by it. But instead of rebuking me, he decided to give me an education in agriculture and who I would grow up to be as a woman. And he said to me, whoever feeds you controls you. And it's by the sweat of my brow that you will eat today. And what kind of food would be on your plate? And he says, there is honor in everything. And don't you ever walk in shame or embarrassment because of who you are. And so I grew up with a grandfather and a grandmother who were farmers. And to this day, if you look at how things turn out, that then I would then be leading the office of civil rights. That's ordering my step. That's understanding that all crooked places can be made right. Because of what we are doing in agriculture, this is even bigger than us and what we're doing in civil rights today. I stand on the shoulders and we stand on the shoulders of trailblazers who fought tirelessly for the rights and empowerment of women and marginalized women, and women who've been asked to be in the background, and women who have been ignored. We celebrate the achievements of women from the past and recommit ourselves to the work that we're doing today. That's what civil rights is all about. Civil rights is just bigger than just the title or position. You're either here for the cash or you're here for the cause. And I'm here for the cause. I didn't come here to have a job. I came to do a job because the stakes are so high today when it comes to equity and seeing that everybody has a seat at the table of opportunity. As a woman in civil rights and a woman of civil rights, I'm particularly focused on women who are on the margins. While progress is being made in our office, after years of systematic dysfunction and racism. We're here today to own what we've done in our past and to say if you want to do better, you've got to stand forward and acknowledge what has been done and say we're going to do things a little bit differently. Not pretend that it didn't happen, but just come out and say we're making changes. And I thank Secretary Velsic and Deputy Secretary Torres Small for their honesty and transparency and allowing someone and having the foresight to have someone here in this position who is a civil rights advocate and champion for those who need somebody to be an advocate and for the law. While we're making progress, women are still underrepresented in leadership in positions around the world. While there is a record of women in the House of Representatives, we only make up 28% of those in Congress. 
In state legislators, we have about 32% of elected seats. The struggle for women's rights is about recognizing the inherent worth and potential of every individual. Women's rights is human rights. And that's what civil rights is about. It's not a handout. It's giving people what to do them. And nobody should be discriminated against in any way. It's not right. It's not what it's supposed to be. As a little girl, I had dreams of coming to Washington, D.C. and being able to serve my country. And I'm here today proud to serve as Deputy Assistant Secretary. When I look out my window at the Washington Monuments, my grandparents didn't live to see it, but they stand as ancestors over that great balcony in heaven to know that every sacrifice we made, we made so that you can be here, but you didn't just come here to be quiet. You came here to represent. You came here to speak the truth. And you came here to do right by people because you're counting on us to do it and we can do no less. So to start, I want to say to you that right now in our office, the office of the assistant secretary, we have 188 funded positions and 99 of them are filled by women. In addition, women hold 15 supervisory positions in our department. It's not enough just to have women in positions. It's crucial that we must listen and hear the voice of women when we are implementing policy. Man. Yes. Man. Gone are the days of giving people who fight for civil rights the scraps. Yes. We're entitled to a seat at the table yes. to be fair and equitable. And I can tell you, I stand in my integrity as a former judge, former prosecutor, former state attorney general, and a pastor. Yes. USDA under Secretary Belsick is now trying to do right by people because President Biden and Secretary Harris in 2022 issued an executive order that mandated that equity, equity. be preeminent in his administration. Yeah. And USDA has surpassed that in every way. Let's give USDA a round of applause for what they are doing. Look, I, look, I came here to give a big old speech, but it's getting too hot now. Come on. So I'm going to close this out by saying, and I don't need any more words to say. Yeah. You hold on. All right. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep working with us because I can tell you we have over 100,000 employees. We don't always get it right. But I can promise you in the area of civil rights as it relates to women, every day of my life I know about the honor and the privilege because I'm here for something greater. Something greater. My steps are ordered in order to be able to do right by people. And with the support and the vision of Secretary Velsey, and Deputy Secretary Torres Small, we will do right in civil rights. Thank you so very much.